Hello, and welcome back. So, while you've been away, I had some time when I was doing other jobs, so I put Factorio up on the other screen, and I boxed off this area. So we now have all four quarters of our map boxed in, which means I'm no longer getting lots of attacks on this border here, which is great. Um, I haven't been around to really look at the resources in here. Um, 31, 18, 26, 25, and of course Sod's Law, just out here, 56. Um, there are some oil patches. That one is 4K. That one is 6K. So really nothing to write home about. Yeah, another 6K there. Um, so it's looking like potentially this particular mega base is going to have a whole load of small mines rather than a small number of very large ones. What's that? 19 million of iron there. So yeah, really hardly worth looking at. Um, I'm just going to show a quick cheat because you're probably you probably boxed in things like this before and then come back a few hours later and the bugs have reinfested because you missed a nest or because there was a pack of biters not attached to a nest, you'd killed the nest, uh, and then they clumped into their circle and grew a new a new home. Um, if you bring up the debug menu uh, on the F keys, uh, yeah, so F7 should be the most detailed view. F6 is slightly less detailed. Um, you can fiddle around with the settings where, um, let's try and find it. Um, Where are we? Show enemy expan en show enemy expansion candidate chunks. Okay, that's the useful one. Now I freely admit this is more than a little bit of a cheat, uh, but let's have a quick look. So you see these green circles? They're things where um, they're within the territory of Bitoness. So the the totally clear area the biters have no interest in, the green chunks are places where these might be wanting to go, uh, and then when they're actively under attack you see lines coming in to where the attack came from, so where they're going to plot a path to hit back, and you do get solid chunks when they're committed to expanding out into a chunk. Um, so you can see there's no green or red circles within my base, that means I've got them all. Uh, if at any point I had happened to miss a roving pack of biters and they managed to nest, then on this particular view I'd get a little pop-up of some red surrounded by green showing their territory. Um, right, so it's not something you should, oh well, unless you're really cheaty, but it's not something you should really rely on. It takes the sort of exploring, trying to find the bugs and killing them aspect of the game out. but. To be honest, at this point, I'm almost at the point of killing the biters at the command line. Um, my compromise was I cleared them all out with artillery and then running through with followers and with nukes, hit everything I could see, and then afterwards went back and double checked that I hadn't missed anything, which I had. So, uh, just for your information. Right, so we're over here now. This is the low density structure site, and I've taken a template from another one of the builds. Low density structures has three items coming in and one item going out. The three items in are, let's see if I can remember this, copper, steel, plastic. The item going out is low density structure. We have a massive compression on this. Uh, there's a vast amount of materials that goes into a single piece of structure. So uh, this is one of those stations that we're going down from an eight train to a four train. So let's get started. Let's see if we can design this. Uh, we're gonna go for the simplest possible design. Uh, so start off with a 12 beacon build. Um, 
Right, start off with a simple 12 beacon build. Uh, I've come straight from walling, so you can see I've got all this stuff in my inventory. Let's, yeah, let's put that back. And what else? I don't need artillery, don't need the guns, don't need these boxes. I don't think I need any of these boxes, to be honest. Let's keep the other stuff, it may come in useful. Okay. Don't have any copper cable for some reason. Right, let's put a request in for one stack of copper cable. There we are. Okay, so let's see if we can build a low density structure design. Right, so um, this is going to be making the low density structures, and it's a really long build 30 seconds base rate and 5105 for a single item. So that is 20 items in, one item out. Right, let's prog mod it. So that'll be 20 items in, 1.4 items out. Um, and then beacon that. Uh, there we are. And what I'm not sure about is whether we'll get away with one request a chest or if we will require two. So we're going to start off assuming we can do one. We will set up the requests with that. So let's say we have an ingoing and an outgoing and we need logistics box, uh, logistics boxes. Okay, we have a box of reds and a box of blues now. Um, so we're going to request some things. We are going to produce some things. And for now, let's power this all up with substations just to get the thing powered. Okay, so, um, so that is shift right click to pick up the recipe that assembly uses, shift left click to put it down, and that's what it requires for 30 seconds of operation. So this is 80 steel plates, 40 and 40 of plastic and copper. Okay, and max rate calculator says it requires 0 0.4 of of a stack inserter of copper and plastic and 0 0.9 of steel. So we can clearly handle all of this with a single incoming inserter and a single outgoing inserter. Okay, so that makes our build really quite simple. And it's now gonna be a game of how many of these can we fit into a single build. Let's grab some poles. Uh, since we can do the close packing, I'm going to do it with poles rather than um, substations. I would use substations if there was a gap somewhere where a substation would fit within the build, but since there isn't, there's no point. Right, so there, 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 there. The other thing, if you build with substations, it complicates um, the rest of the build with the center of where the trains are. Uh, you get bridging of the electric networks, which I'm sure is often exactly what people do want. But for me, um, it's absolutely not what I want because I want the networks to be separate. Okay, so 13 I think is the stand width. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, can, 10, 11, 12. Is there room for the 13th there? Yes, there is. Okay, and not quite enough beacons. So that is 
as I understand it, one side of a build. Okay, so that produces Wow, uh, 4.8 items a second. And items per minute. All right, so 291 items a minute. Uh, if we could output 1,000 items a minute, that would be a non-prod mod rocket launch. 700 is a, 715 or 18 or something, is a prod modded rocket launch. So this, build here is going to be able to support more than one rocket launch by the time we have duplicated it up. Let's go and see what we can do. Okay, so this is our single side build. Let's give it an icon we can find. Okay. And start slapping it down. Okay, so um, these signals are the center, I think. So one, two, three. Then we can grub up this one because it was just for design purposes. Oh, I seem to have more than one, more than one pink design. Uh, let's just check what the other one is. Okay, so clear that blueprint, it's just going to be confusing. Again, so this should line up, the mouse should line up with the signal that I'm on. Okay, that, that feels offset. Okay, let's take that all out again, I shouldn't have been centering it on the um, center of the blueprint. I should have been centering it on the cent on the middle um, requester chest. So let's try that again. Okay, so this light is where the middle is. I should have that light lined up with my thirteenth machine and its box. So there, and there. Okay, so that's better. One, two, three. One, two, three. Take with one hand, give with the other. And yeah, I'm in my building suit. Great, so let's drive the train into the center of the build and see if we can get the rest of it down. Feels good to be building something again after quite a few hours of walling. Right, I don't know if I've got the right one here. No, this isn't unload. If I go into the unload, it'll start unloading all my random stuff from this train, which will be not very fun. Oop, further back. Okay, so let's start grabbing things. We need assembly machines. Yep, that's all the assembly machines. I can put all of those unused ones back. Um, I think, have I put down all the boxes? Yep, I think so. Uh, let's drop down for beacons. OK, 
Okay, that's the first lot of beacons. Let's do all these beacons. Is that a full set of beacons? Looks like it. Okay, then uh, prog mods. You can see I'm going down the pick it all up, put what you don't use back route. Um, right, I don't need the filter inserters. I'm going to keep the stacks, they come in useful. Um, here I've I don't need those or those. Ah, they go in up here somewhere. Yeah. This is the better to ask forgiveness plan. And then uh, speed. And that is, I think, an entire train worth of speed modules gone. Let's see how many are left. Oh, quite a few. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so this build was about a third of a train worth of speed modules. So this should be ready to go, except I think I forgot. Did I set the um, requests on these? Let's just double check. Yep, I did. That's fine. Okay. Phew. All right, so the next thing is um, the provider chests are fine. They, they just provide. I need to know the total rate for this whole build. Okay, so this build here produces 1.7k of low density structures as output. So that would be, uh, I'm trying to do the sums in my head, 700, sorry, um, yeah, you need 700 and something low, 718, something like that, uh, for one rocket a minute. So this is about two and a quarter rockets a minute, just on this one build, which I have to say I'm happy with. That seems like a good sized build to me. Um, right, so let's see what else. We are not clocking this. I could clock it, but I'm not going to bother. So let's take out the clock. There are fiddle to set up. Um, the SR latch, on the other hand, is worth doing, but I need to know what the capacity is on the site. And for that, I need to know for how many boxes I will have um, and other useful things. Right, so we have an input of 6K of the smaller items and 12K of the steel. Uh, so in stack inserters, that's three versus seven. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is go with sufficient. We will start naming these stations. So this one here is currently a long station. Um, right, so this will be low density structure. May as well make this plastic. Okay, low density structure plastic. It just needs 3.7 inserters to supply the whole thing. Um, so I'm gonna go with four, sorry, with eight. That's one per carriage. That's going to be absolutely fine. Okay. The next one we would do is low density structures, copper plate. And again, this is going to be a single inserter item. Come on. Okay, let's head up and double check. Yep. Yeah. Then the other thing to be offloaded is steel. Uh, 
There we are. And the steel is going to need two boxes. Well, technically it needs 7.5, so that would be one per carriage. But if I double it, then we know we're always going to be able to unload a, a train in about half the time it takes for us to need the next train. And it's just a nice buffer. We should have a train behind it, but in the case where we don't, this gives you time to get the next train in. Okay, so the next thing is to look at the boxes. So they appear to be wired. They appear to be wired. They do. I'm not sure what's going on there. Right, we seem to have something going on with. Let's take that away. I don't trust it. Um, right, back to green wire. So we have a green wire running there to there, and then from there to there. So that should be reading low density structure. So let's change that to there. Change that to there. Now, what does low density structure stack in? And for that, I'm going to ask Factorio Wiki. Okay, I wish there was an easier way. I get confused. It stacks in tens. Okay, so we get 40 per box. So, well, 40 per train carriage, and so I'll, the boxes will be requesting, sorry. Right, they stack in tens. So you get 100 in a row, 400 in a train carriage. Train carriages don't have this last row, so this will be requesting Four hundred of those. Let's run all the way up. Set that for all of them. Whoop! That one should be requesting fuel. That's better. Uh, right. So, and then we have to decide: Are we going for a little train or a big train? So. Let's do the total items per minute now. All right, so we're 1.7K per minute. We fit 400 per train carriage. So 16 would be four carriages. So that would be one train a minute for a four carriage train. One train every two minutes for an eight carriage train. And I guess this is where I need to decide, am I bringing in one or two carriage trains to the um, rocket site? I think I'm going to bring in eight carriage trains to the rocket launch site. Um, just because there's a further 10 times compression on the launch, isn't there? Uh, okay, so we'll go for this. So then if we have... Um, 400 per box, 8 times 400 is 3,200, that sounds about right, isn't it? So the maximum here is 3,200. Right, so then the set latch, let's set that at... Um, Four hundred. So when we're down to a single box left, kick in. Um, obviously, these things can be tuned later. Okay, so I think that is this site all set up. What we need to do now is check any wiring that needs doing. Okay, so on the map, let's zoom in. 
yes, we have two clearly separate networks. Um, we are missing some power here. Oh, hang on. I don't have any small poles. That could be a problem. Maybe there are some missing from the build if they're missing from me. Is that where they would be? Yeah, it is. Okay, no small poles. But I think I have some in the other train. Okay. Great. View. Yep, so I think everything there is covered. And then uh, we are missing. That last link. So let's look back at map view. Yes, we've got the green wire. We've got the two separate networks. And we can double check for any things which are lacking power. These are because they haven't been given the small, the medium poles. So I keep calling them small poles, they're the medium poles. Okay, we have a lot of drone ports here. I've got a feeling not all of these are needed for the build. However, they are needed for the logistics supply. Okay, so let's double check this is all correct. We have a passive provider here, which is going to be providing one of the items we need. Passive provider here, which is set up to read logistics. So this is logistics supply. There we are, logistics supply. That's set up with a condition. Do I have any log you bots on me? No. Okay, so this also needs to be set up with a condition. Um, right, there to there to there. Yeah, that works. Uh, so this is going to be um, fuel supply. And uh, that's got the enable disabled condition all set up correctly. It was just missing the wire. Great. And so what we need now is a couple of logi bots just to seed this system. Um, whoa. Probably the best way to do that is when the logi bots are dropped off, just to grab a couple from the box and drop them in. Okay, so the other thing this site is missing is the self-loading logistics chest. We have a, an attack. Oh, it's a bit of wool out there. Cool. Uh, right, and I'm missing blue boxes. So I need a stack of those. Ah. I really was missing blue boxes. Let's walk all the way around my build, just checking. I can't see anything on the map view flashing from here. No, I think that's it. Great, so this is all fueled up. All we need now is to bring in trains. 
So, um, let's head to steel, because that's going to be the next. For this to work, we need steel. And let's have a look at that and decide whether it's something to fix now or something to fix later. Okay, so steel is one of my very first builds. Um, it yeah, it doesn't even have power coming in, and it's the old setup uh, without the logistic support. So I think I'm going to call that an episode today. Um, next time we will look at the steel build, adding the logistic support. In fact the map. Right, so this is a carbon copy near enough of the um, iron build and the copper build, and the iron copper builds have been adjusted for Logi. So um, to be honest, the simplest thing for me to do is off screen, take a blueprint of this, edit out all the machines and the inserter boxes, and dump that down over the top of this and then just fix whatever needs fixing by hand. Uh, what's going on here? We have a... Oh, something wanting rail. That's an odd one. Let's go have a look at that. That's a little bit weird. Right, where is this thing? There's two construction bots apparently in here. Um, right, anyway, I will figure out whatever's going wrong with that thing. That's weird. Um, so next time, yeah. Next time we will hopefully have the steel unwind. Um, and there's a slightly odd thing about that. Um, so... Like your thing? What am I talking? I'm just rambling now. Um, yeah, when we online the steel build, that should be pulling iron plates from the iron smelter. Um, and that will stress that bit. It'll be pulling copper from the copper smelter. It'll be pulling plastic from the plastic site, which will be pulling materials from the refinery. Because of how these are all set up, we should always have at least two incoming trains for any one site. So what I've been doing at the moment is setting things up with a single incoming train, um, except for the ore trains where I've added several. I think at some point, either off camera or in a performance tuning episode, I'm going to go around and start adding two trains for each of the incoming stations and see what blo blocks and what jams. Um, and at that point, we might have to start looking at doubling up. So for example, doubling the size of the copper plate build. So adding in a second copper module stacked behind the first one. We will see. Um, for now, um, thanks very much for watching. Uh, I will be back soon and we will deal with the steel. Till then, have fun, like, subscribe, tell your friends, and I will be back soon.